Yo, so today's video is about me, me, obviously. This week, I asked Instagram and Discord to ask me kind of like interview questions that I can answer for this video. We have a couple good questions, and then of course, we got those trolling questions, but anyways, let's get right into it. Starting off with iPhone or Android. Okay, so I actually started off with an Android phone. I don't know the exact model, but it was from HTC, and this was like beginning of college, I think the first two years, and I got my first iPhone, which was the iPhone 4S, and it had kind of the boxy look, kind of similar to the one I have right now, which is the 14. Pro and I loved it. And the main reason why I loved the iPhone more than the Android phone that I had was because the Android phone that I had, every time I try to film a video or some sort of content and try to upload on Instagram or Snapchat, it was pixelated, it was choppy, it was just quality overall after uploading it on like a social media platform. It was really bad. Ever since then, I always stuck with iPhone and I haven't really tried an Android phone after that. Yes, it was like a decade ago, but it didn't, it didn't scar me forever. I'm still open to an Android phone. It's just that now that I have an iPhone, and my whole family has an iPhone. Our group messages and our texts to each other are just that iconic blue color that everyone knows and loves. And of course the emojis. So if I were to get an Android, I would definitely break that and then just ruin it with that green font or the green text that nobody really likes. I'm sticking with iPhone for now. What's the biggest determining factor for the sound of a keyboard? Wow, good question. All right, I'm gonna have to get my keyboard real quick. So I got a keyboard here. There's not one big factor. It's actually just a combination of a bunch of things that really determine the sound and feel of the keyboard keyboard, but I think one of the main ones is this keyboard that I have right now is a metal keyboard. So compared to two, two different materials is a plastic one and then a metal keyboard, there's gonna have different sound quality and sound profiles from each other. So for example, if I were to put a certain switch in the plastic keyboard and then compare it with the metal keyboard, you're gonna have a different sound and feel because of the material of the keyboard. Second is the plate. I would say the plate, it could be a polycarbonate material plate. It could be a FR4 material, aluminum. So there's that metallic pingy sound that some people are after and then there's that creamy, thocky, fulfilled sound that, you know, everyone knows and loves, especially on social media. So the plate, another contributing factor. Of course, the switches, everyone knows about that. Lube switches, depending on linear, tactile, or clicky. Again, all the different sound profiles that everyone knows and loves. And lastly, keycaps. There's different materials for keycaps. ABS, PBT, there's ceramic now, and metal, metal keycaps. From the material of the keyboard, plate, what type of switch, keycaps. And lastly, as much as I want to delve more into the keyboard hobby and, and try to keep it as beginner-friendly, there's there's foam configurations. So how much foam is in the keyboard, whether you have the bottom case foam, do you have the plate foam, do you have PE foam? There, there's so much configurations that you can really do with the keyboard overall. And that definitely affects the sound and feel. I know that was a lot, but just bear with me. If you have any more in-depth questions or concerns, just join my Discord, reach out to me, and then I'll, I'll do my best to reply back. Good question. Very good question. English or Spanish? Are you Filipino? Yes. How tall am I? Ooh, okay, as a Filipino American, I'm at 5'5". Five five. It's fine, it's fine. Height matters not. Favorite keycap set? Ooh, okay, so I have a couple. Hard to kind of choose because my moods change throughout the year. So the number one I would have to say is the GMK Red Samurai. That has a special place in my heart because that was actually one of the first videos that went like viral. And I've had that split keyboard ever since 2020 when I really started content creating. And yeah, that just, that Red Samurai theme has a special place in my heart. Next one that I can think of is the GMK White on Black Katakana. It's a uh, simple, elegant, and it has uh, Katakana characters on it. This one right now is pretty simple and elegant and kind of straight to the point. This is the Winnie the Pooh from Drop keycap set, or I'm sorry, not Winnie the Pooh, 100 Acres keycap set from Drop. And again, it's a nice lighter tone, nice neutral, and then it fits any theme or aesthetic that you're really trying to go for. Those are my top three right now. Office tour. We don't have the time for a whole office tour this video, but if this video gets around, let's say 15 likes, then I'll do a dedicated office tour for everyone. That way everyone has a better feel as to what my workflow is like and what I was really trying to go for. But, but this is mainly the focal point of the office. You excited for RDJ's return? Yes. I am super excited for RDJ's return. I'm a huge Marvel fan and I was a huge Iron Man fan, obviously right there. So I guess I'm going to have a Victor Von Doom, Dr. Doom mask coming very soon. And I'm just excited as to what Marvel is going to come up with or cook up because now that we have the multiverse, the most recent Deadpool movie, I don't want to spoil anything, but they kind of, they kind of foreshadowed something or kind of gave us a hint as to what's going on. And um, again, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it, but I'll, I'll say one word and I'm hoping that you guys catch on and it's the word anchor. Super excited about RDJ's return. I am Iron Man, not anymore. What 
what that mouth do? Bro, you're on the wrong platform, dude. You gotta ask me that on my other platform. What is the weirdest request someone has given you? Oh, okay, okay. Th this happened actually pretty recently. I went to VidCon this year. I actually ran into a genuine fan for the very first time. The other times were I don't count because they didn't know my name, but this one in particular knew my name, ran up to me and said, hey, I love your videos. May I get a picture with you? Now, mind you, the request isn't weird at all. It was the execution that made it really weird. So this is this is exactly what went down. He got his phone. He propped it up like a selfie, right? And he took pictures nonstop. He just kept taking pictures for like 30, 40 seconds straight. It's funny for the first five to 10 seconds. Like, haha, good joke, ha. Huh? But the fact that he kept going didn't sit well with me at all. It was kind of, I felt uncomfortable and it was like, okay, ha, huh, let's go. At, at the time I was with my buddy uh, out of the box YouTube. If you haven't followed him or checked his videos out, he's also a tech reviewer. I was with Andrew at the time and we were going to like the Minecraft booth and not only did he take like 250 pictures of us, but he also tagged along with us and, and explored the Minecraft booth as well, which again was a little weird to me that he kind of stuck around. But at the same time, it's it's cool. I mean, first fan interaction, that's definitely going to be memorable for the rest of my content creating career. So, so shout out to you if you're watching this video. John, why didn't you reply to me? About what? Would you rather sit on a cake and eat a dick or sit on a dick and eat a cake? You guys are outlandish. You guys are unhinged. If it were up to me, I would rather sit on a dick and eat a dick. <laughs> Top five anime. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, the first couple animes that I'm thinking of, One Piece for sure. One Piece is number one. And Naruto. I grew up knowing and loving these characters and I was there tuning in every single week. In fact, Naruto ended around like mid college. So the fact that I was able to witness the start and finish of a whole anime series like that is it, it hits home. And then the fact that One Piece as well is going to finish very soon, next year, I believe, and that I'm gonna witness it, super excited for that. So One Piece and Naruto, top two. I'm loving JJK. Uh, number four, solo leveling. I binged watched that. And number five, Death Note. What is the inside your Star Wars keyboard? Sounds very good, question mark. What type material? That Star Wars keyboard is actually this one, the Bridge 75. And the only reason why he thought it was a Star Wars keyboard was because I had Boba Fett keycaps on it. So I switched out the keycaps various times on this particular board, which is the Bridge 75 from Shortcut Studios. And it actually sounds like this out of the box. I didn't do any modifications whatsoever besides changing the keycaps. And it's gasket mounted. Oh my gosh, I just remembered something. That that's another contributing factor for that, for the question where they said, what is a big contributor for the sound profile of the keyboard? The mounting style. But again, I don't want to make it so in depth. I want to kind of want to make it beginner friendly. The reason why this sounds and feels good to type on is because of the certain mounting style, which is gasket mounted. Um, it has all the foam configurations. It's metal, Princess MMD linear lube switches, screw and stabilizers, all lubed again. And of course the plate is an FR4 plate. So again, all the contributing factors to make it sound and feel good good. That's why this hobby is never ending. I don't see this hobby going away tomorrow. Probably going to be here for the next 20, 30 plus till next lifetime. That's what makes it sound good. We're done with the Instagram questions. Let's move on to Discord. What is a beginner friendly editing and video software? I want my videos to pop. Okay, so when I first started editing videos, I bought Filmora, which is a one-time fee software. It's called Wondershare Filmora 10 or something like that. And that's what really kickstarted my journey in editing. Mind you, it's really beginner friendly. It's user friendly, straight to the point, and it taught me how to export in like 4k however if i were to start fresh if i were to start all over and go straight into an editing software it would either be one of two software it would be davinci resolve because it's free and then number two film cut pro the one on the mac what are certain ways to edit or best ways to come up with good hooks for both short and long form content. For certain ways to edit, I, again, just tutorials on YouTube, those are your best friends. And then best ways to come up with good hooks and both short form and long form. Okay, to this day, I still can't crack. I don't know the, the exact algorithm or what the algorithm likes. What I personally do is I just post. I just post and then like kind of just forget about it and just hope that it blows up or not really blows up. Like it's, it's you know, it's something my audience would like to like and vibe out with. For others that really get into like analytics and stuff like that, good hooks can range from how to do this to the most outlandish hook ever <laughs> and the person that has the most outlandish hooks that i can think of would be vioko so if you haven't checked his content out check out vioko's short form videos those hooks are super outlandish but he gets views for long form the hook can be like 20 to 30 seconds usually it's just highlights of what you're going to do in the video again you can be outlandish but for me personally i i kind of just get straight to the point or ways to keep the audience retention if you know any good tips the retention ooh, okay so with this new short form 
platform wave, retention is the key. And then to really retain the audience's attention, again, I, I personally don't, I'm not an expert on that, I just post, but that the video has to be entertaining from start to finish. And to do that, it's either your video is that good, quick cuts, J cut, especially when like, it's like an unboxing video, just a bunch of like different angles. So again, it's like you're keeping the viewer's attention while keeping them entertained. And then it's still the same topic offering value. I think that's honestly the foundation and the fundamentals of like a good quote unquote video. Bring back the podcast with Justin. That's not a question, but we'll see. Justin's only like 10 minutes away from me now, so we don't have to go on the internet to, to do a podcast. We can do an in-person podcast. I think that sums up everything actually. So we're pretty much caught up for a one day request from the audience, Discord, Instagram questions. And if you want to participate on the next video, do me a favor, join Discord or follow me on Instagram. And usually, I'll just ask on my story and all you have to do is just reply. And if you want to be featured on the next video, let me know either on Discord or Instagram. Uh, thank you for watching my video. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notification for similar videos like this. And if you haven't, join my Discord. Thank you for watching. All right, see you.